So welcome back guys to the Team PH World Cup Candidate Summit. This time is part 2, Electric Boogaloo. We're gonna be moving on to our general managers. It's me, boy, Dax, back with the hosting. Also, don't forget, I'm your coach candidate. So if you can, vote for me. Smash that button up on my left. Here we go. We got Fastnate still staying on. Mr. Fastnate, how are you doing after an intense and interesting session with our community leads? Very, very great my friend uh uh at least now we have uh something to uh to let other uh voters know that what they want to do if they become community lead um this type of uh podcast if you will um is really helpful especially with um uh these uh what do you how do you put this uh yung mga gustong mag maging ano mag run for general manager and community lead um, a chance to promote themselves even more. Yeah, I completely agree. This is the for them to show up for the community. So guys, what is a general manager? Honestly, it's the hardest job. And pretty much why I didn't take it. You know, I'd go for it. But at the same time, it's most important one. Because with that, Without general manager, there will be no World Cup community. Without general manager, there is no contact point to Blizzard. And without a general manager, who's going to get us the funding to go all the way to Anaheim? By the way pala, uh, may mga nakikita akong nag-circulate sa mga Discord channels. I don't know bakit may nag-share pala. Na. Even I was debated. Yung about sa who gets to pick. Uh, general manager. Okay, Make okay, okay. Turn... I, I will. I, yeah, I, I, okay, I want to okay. get involved in this. I don't know who okay. started it. Who's who was stupid enough to get it from the 2018 World Cup? I even made an article, guys. So, last say, just a quick heads up. 2019 World Cup, Blizzard has changed general managers. They are now also of the popular vote. Same thing as community lead. Yes. The general manager position has been assigned by Blizzard for the past few years due to the fact that it was based on a leaderboard system. The thing is, not every country really has a proper Kona point to Blizzard. And since they're opening up the World Cup, it is more feasible to let those countries that Blizzard doesn't really focus on to choose their own uh, candidates, choose their own committee, especially general manager. Because what if... They get someone they know, probably for like, for what, Hearthstone, Starcraft, but they know anything about Overwatch, it's not going to work out. So it has become a popular vote. All three positions are for voting for. The coach, of course, does have the top 150 restriction, which is more or less not really working as well, you know. Uh, I don't know what's up. Sometimes the lower ranks can vote, sometimes the higher ranks can't vote, but it is what it is. So yeah, general manager is up to you. Each and every one of you, anyone who has a PH Ballonet account and all your Smurfs with it, will be picking between one of our three candidates down below. So quick little FYI real quick guys, uh, Nila Varel, our third candidate, is a little busy with something very important. She's the correspondent for the Nationals right now, which is having its finals, so she will be hopping in and out of the Q&A till she's able to find a stable time. So more or less, it's gonna be power love on momoring, bouncing ideas, bouncing questions from one another. When we get Mika in, then we can get her answers. But we really wanna be able to give all the GMs a chance to say their platforms, a chance to really commune with the community, and just a chance to show up and be their own identity. So let's start things off. First things first, same question from before. The first question we got from community leads, what have you done for the PH Overwatch community? We'll start things off from left to right. Of course, Powerful Love, take it away. Our first candidate for general manager. Okay, hello. Oh guys, oh wait, so we're not gonna do the introductions first or oh oh my bad oh, my pala. My bad. Did it rookie <laughs> mistake. I couldn't find it in our thing. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, dude. That is your classic Dax rookie mistake out of nowhere. Let's get that one fixed up. But yeah, power of love. Please introduce yourself. I and what your platform is. That's the that's the big omega lol you guys can get for your contents. Yeah, Mr. Power of Love. Or some people know you as Sacred, of course. Hit me up with your platform. All right. So hi guys. Um, I'd like to introduce myself as my 
real self, siguro since I'm running for general manager. Uh, my name is uh, Nelson Stephen Ventura. Um, I'm running for general manager as part of love, but most people actually know me as Sacred for my in-game name. Uh, a little background on me, I'm a civil engineer. I studied in De La Salle University uh, for my undergrad, and I'm currently taking my master's in Chula Longkorn in Thailand. So let's go uh, a bit on my Overwatch career. So basically, I play main support in a open division team right now, which is in Terror Southeast Asia. So we're not that well known, but it's a tier around tier four team. So yeah. Um, however, I also used to play as a captain as well as a manager in a less known team before. But if you're familiar in the Southeast Asia team, you may have heard of Supervia. Uh, I founded it way back last year around um, season two of the Open Division 2018. Um, so since I book screens and talk to other players and managers of other Southeast Asian teams, uh, I was able to make some connections with them within the region, especially with some people in Singapore and Thailand. Um, a little uh, fun fact, my first OD game was actually against Miraculum. And yung unang death ko is actually from the Fire Strike of Fascinate. So thanks. Damn, I still remember. I can't. Dude. I remember. I remember. I remember playing against Supervia, but I do not remember that dude. much deep. Dude, 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 dude. God, dude you have listen, insane. You have listen, insane listen, memory. Fascinate. Listen, listen, listen. Think about this. You gave him a digital <laughs> autograph to start off his Overwatch <laughs> career. You yes, are the reason. You are the death. music in him. That kind of deal. What amazing. Yeah. Carry on, carry on. I'm sorry. That just absolutely <laughs> amazed me. Yeah. So um, aside from my Overwatch career, I have some experience working on um, general sponsorship, marketing, publicity, uh, project management way back when I was in university. So mainly my forte would be on planning and strategizing. So I do a lot of organizational development, managing conference and seminars, as well as uh, event planning and uh, the like. So without going uh, further into details, I'll just go to my uh, plans for the uh, Overwatch World Cup. So yeah, basically, if you saw my post in the Overwatch Philipp Pinoy Overwatch um, on one of the posts I was tagged in, I uh, posted my uh, platforms there also. But to sum this up, we're gonna use our ultimates to. Ooh. Basically, to basically um, run through the Overwatch World Cup. So first, we're going to use Rally. And we're going to do this by immediately building a team of organizers for the Overwatch World Cup team. So along with the coach and the community head, we'll be um, having some community teams, uh, community teams rather. Uh, so we won't be um, lacking in manpower. Because as we all know, uh, the, the three main uh, committees, uh, can't do this alone so we need everyone as much uh support as we can so we have to work together in order for us to um uh bring the philippine team into life right so next after using our rally we're gonna barrage the enemies or rather we're gonna barrage the companies uh media partners com uh ngos any general sponsors we can with all our requests with all our um propositions and stuff so in order to get all of the, in order to, to get their attention and possibly convince them that, that we are in this to it, right? So if that doesn't work, we need to also use nano boost. Sorry, I'm just kind of cringy, but yeah, we have to power up our no, players. You're doing great. You're doing great. I love it. I love how you continue. Love it. Continue. Love continue. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we have to power up our players, but also our head coach and community lead with the facilities and resources that we would be able to provide them. Uh, this could be either with from um, equipment discounts, shop discounts, freebies, media exposure. So um, what I want to emphasize here is I'm not the one who's going to carry this, guys. Uh, everyone is. I'm just here to pocket you. I'm here to give you all the support I can. So yeah, next would be infrasites. So, what I want here is that we have a transparent and reliable information dissemination. Because if we don't know, uh, if the people don't know what we are doing, how would they trust us? How would they give their support to us, right? So we need to um, successfully dive our targets once we know uh, where they are positioned, where uh, 
where our goals are at. So yeah, we need to be transparent in our information dissemination. Lastly, we want to use our primal rage to uh, hype the Philippines up and let the world know that the Philippines Overwatch community is alive uh, and we're not backing down from this fight. So guys, uh, with this, I hope we can press Q to win together and I hope to, <laughs> that we can make it to the World Cup, right? So thank you guys. That's all for me. Dropping the platform. Dude, 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 let me get in on this. He's dropping that platform. Like He's I dropping that beats. hammer down already. Uh, wow. First... No, yes, no, dude. no. I'm, I'm like, going yeah. there. I'm going uh, there, dude. Shattering okay, I, our expectations. Yeah, shattering. That I definitely. Kind of perfect. Perfect. I feel gravitated to uh, a surge I was of may, I was made frozen by oh, the um, No, no, that's not an ultimate. <laughs> shut up. That's not an ultimate. It's not an overwatch mechanic. Shut up. It's not an ultimate. It's a mechanic. Oh, it's a mechanic. Oh. So somebody's like, hi, I will freeze you. And then this my <laughs> ultimate. Ultra freeze. <laughs> oh my god. But that was really very well prepared. I'm 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 I don't know what to say, dude. That was well, very well prepared. Integrating Overwatch mechanics into your campaign, uh, that was really nice touch to it. That was, that would really, really pull in people to you. Uh, great job. Sorry, I got carried away. That was really I mean, good. Passionate ruined the thing, but that was a great, wow, great dude. speech there. From and you ruined Sweden. your stream by by not asking who they are. Okay. Huh? Uh, no, no, no. You can't pull no. it on Rookie. me. I, it's it's like okay, I flubbed. That's part of the Dax charm. But Mr. Fastnate's like, oh, I'm gonna freeze someone. Okay, I'm gonna freeze. <laughs> I, I that's my the rookie mistake. Okay. Oh. Figure out this, is that is that your Winston impression? Okay, we're getting off topic. So yes, let's no. actually come back. No, let's actually get into the meat of that dissemination. So really, uh, power of love here, just tackling all the aspects, really making this a not just a one man team, not just a three man team, but a full freaky community. And that's what you gotta do as general manager. Honestly, as GM, you do have to tackle pretty much every role. You do get involved with the coaching, do get involved with the community, and of course you make the foundations at the same time be the contact point and make this thing happen. So for Power of Love, buzzwords abound, I can really see that there is quality inside of his uh, repertoire and his, uh, you know, for his speech. So let's move it on. Pass the ball to Momo Ring. It was a quite a lengthy speech there for Powerful Love, but it's okay. We got the time. Momo Ring, who are you and what is your platform? Uh, hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Take your time. Hello? 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 Your mic is getting cut off, I think. Yeah, just oh. a little bit. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. I Hello. believe in you. If you Hello? really do have struggles, what? I could be your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? 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 Hello. Hello. Sir. Mom, yeah. sir. May I take your order? <laughs> Did it go? Oh, man. It's unfortunate. Like, he's cutting yeah. out so much. I'll try yeah, and change. Hi, I'll do a real, a quick little thing. I'll change the server. Yeah, um, yeah actually. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make go, it. Go, we'll, right. we'll probably DC mm. real quick from voice 3 to 1. Uh, hello, hello everyone. Hello, try hello. again. Try again. There you go. Oh, it's still nope. one more. Uh, oh, it's not working. Try, try Jap Japan server. Try Japan server. Japan, uh, let's go to the land of Nippon and Gundam. Here we go again. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Hello. Hello. I think you net going. Unfortunate. Oh, it's internet. unfortunate. That's actually oh. unfortunate. It is net this. Yeah. Um, Shit in the uh, bed, guys. That's you know, that's what we have. Rocky this. On Rocky. So well maybe we'll give Boomerang just a little bit to talk about uh to come back and fix his tech issues. Uh yeah. is that okay? Yeah. yeah. We'll give him we'll give him three minutes. So let's you know, I don't want to move on to the next question as of yet. I do want to ask though, to Power of Love, what's with all the ultimates? Mr. Mr. Paola, Mr. Sacred, what's how how long did it take you to figure out to make those buzzwords? Tell me about it. Actually, the funny thing is I only did that this morning, <laughs> cause well, not this morning, like the the time they like the morning ko kailan ako inadun sa group in Overwatch final Overwatch. So like, ewo ko na isip ko lang, oh, I'm doing this and this is my platform. It's in bullet form. 
what can I what can I infer from this? So, like, I want people to go together. So like in goats, diba? we rally together. So, something like that. Mm-hmm. And parang we send like in my idea, because my experience with um marketing, kailang, I mean with sponsorship itself, kailangan mo talagang batohin ng batohin ng <laughs> ng letters ang mga sponsors. So like that's why I got the barrage. And pretty much after nun, dinner dinner siya ko na lang siya. <laughs> I mean, it's so, yeah. it's spicy, but I would have been more impressed if you made one bullet point per ultimate. You know, you know, I, I would mm-hmm. that the extra step. But maybe that's something to look forward to in the future. If we get you for GM, maybe, maybe. Hope for the best, guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so there you go, Mr. Momoring. Are you back and a okay? Unfortunately. Let's ah. test your mic once again. Can you speak? Fast. Hello. Fascinate. Stop DDoSing our general manager candidates to try to do their wow. best. Wow. Pinning the blame on me? Of course. Hello? You, you pin everyone in the first place. No. You oh, want wait. me to share your, your Lucio on your Lucio play on Volskaya part 2? Or oh, no. round oh, I, I will. I, no, hey, no VOD leaks here because I, I have so <laughs> many VODs of you messing up. I have grab. I have grab. <laughs> We're gonna expose. Oh, there. there oh, there. wait. Oh, there. Stop being at each other's throats. Momo Ring, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, it's it's oh, still no, cutting it's still out. getting cut off. You know what's happening? Have you, right? tried, have you tried adjusting your, I know, your voice sensitivity, the voice settings? Yeah, maybe. Just, how about just make it open mic the whole time? Yeah, yeah. Put it on open mic na lang. Tapos lower the voice activity. Maybe that would help. Sige, wait lang. Wait, sige, I know, wait I know. Lang. Very sige, clear. Sige, wait lang was great. It was yes. the first time I heard the sentence. Sige, wait lang. For the international audience, that means, yes, wait. Oh, no. No more ring. Why? Come back to us. I think, guys, it's time for a musical number while we're waiting for this to be okay. Mr. Fastnate, why don't you enrich us with your voice? Uh, why me? It's your, it's your podcast. It should be your... Yeah, it's, it's my podcast, so I, I basically tell you what to do. Smile. 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 But, uh, yeah. Definitely, yeah. it should be... You're, you should be the, uh, the star of the show. Yeah, okay. You're, well, cause I, we'll... Especially, especially in the last. Oh yeah, yeah. Where... Actually, good point. Yeah, this is a very good point. Since we're having technical issues right now, I'm gonna answer some questions from the yeah, audience I'll slash from that. the thing about the coaching thing. Cause I was gonna leave this for the last part. Cause again, I want to make this more focused on them. But since we do have the time in the middle, might as well, right? So, I'm gonna read some questions out real quick. Uh, I don't have the speaking thing because you know you assume I'm always speaking. That kind of deal. So first question to Mr. Dax is, where is it? Where is the question for Mr. Dux? What master you the what matters the most to you for a player? Oh, okay, wait, wrong grammar. Which matters the most to you for a player? Colon. That that aspires. Blah blah blah. Roster, skill rank, or potential. Ah, okay. I had to figure it out. The sentence was all weird, but basically, the question is: What is more important, skill rank at the start or potential? So this is the thing, your skill rank is really just a measure of how you're performing right now. But at the same time, if you st- just talk about potential, where, where do you stop? Where do you stop in terms of your boundaries? Do you stop at diamond? Do you stop at plat? Do you stop gold? You can say even a bronze player has potential. So when you aspire for the PH roster, there still needs to be standards. So I would honestly say, I would honestly say that at the start, skill rank is more important than potential due to the fact that with a high skill rank already, there is this room to grow on a higher level. Well, if you do have lots of potential, it is still based on where you are based off. So pretend you bronze and you got all the way to master. That's a big, big leap in terms of potential, but that's still not World Cup level. So again, standards have to be drawn. At the same time, though, I do know the community. I do know the struggles, and I do know, uh, you know, uh, I do know the whole thing about our basic rank right now. But at the same time, with this, as Fascinate is trying to fix up the technical issues, I'm just gonna mute him real quick. But yeah, so where was I? In terms of that roster thing, I know that we aren't the highest ranking team. 
I know that we aren't the biggest master GM thing. I would honestly say, like, sure, if we were in a different country, I would only say GM and above. But we do have to adjust. So skill rank is important. I would say it's the most important, it's more important compared to potential. But this doesn't mean that if you're a low rank, I won't give you a chance. I'll, I'm thinking about figuring something out. Just uh, like an LCQ kind of thing. Like a last chance qualifier, just a sudden death for the for lower ranks. Like if you really do want to aspire, I can give you a chance to try out for a tryout. But yeah, uh, it's something you guys have to figure it out. And if you guys actually saw my my card, I on, I honestly put talent as the thing that's most important. Because pretend you're playing comp, you're playing QP. Why do you care about how everyone else plays? If you all play well, you will win. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Work on yourself. Work yourself on making yourself better. So yeah, I hope that answers your first questions. And if you guys have any questions for me right now, Rebirth and Dodge This can, of course, take that. I'll answer one more question and then we'll pass it back to Momo Ring and try to see if his net is a-okay. Let me just look for one. Oh, this one is interesting. So someone gives you a scenario. Who would you hire between the two? A 30-year-old talented but has responsibilities in life and coachable or an 18-year-old uh, talented has no responsibilities ex except playing but stubborn. So this is the thing. If you move into the World Cup experience the first place, you have to be coachable. You have to understand that, that this thing is a team effort. You're working. You're going to be part of a thing. It's not about being a pub star anymore. So... An 8 year old that's talented and that has the time to dedicate themselves, even if they're stubborn, they have to come in with the knowledge, with the fact that, okay, we have to play as a team, we have to learn from our coach and everyone else who's going to be helping him out to be the best it can be. So now these attitude problems won't show up during tryouts too much. It's going to show up when they're part of the roster, but at the same time, you're not here to waste anyone's time. You're not here to just be a bird in that kind of deal. There's no, there's no feasible way for you to say that what anyone else is saying is wrong. Because at the same time, we're at a low point in the World Cup rankings. If you can say that your way is better than the Koreans, then you are absolutely delusional. So if given that, given that choice... I would say I would take that 80 year old provided that he understands that that is what the World Cup is all about because the 18 year old has the talent, does have the potential, and at the same time has the time as well as the energy for it. If the 30 year old performs as well or even better than the 18 year old, then I'll gladly take the 30 year old. It really depends on how the tryouts will pan out. And yeah, uh, I think, are you guys okay? You guys good? You guys good? Just check on that. Okay, I guess they're still testing out. One more question, guys, before we fix, uh, you know, we move to the general manager stuff again. Is land tryout on the table either for the entire thing or just the final stages of trials? Huh. That's a good question. I think that's going to be dependent on who we got for GM and community lead and if they can make that happen. Pretend they do have a contact with a home shop, then why not? It would be better. You know, it'd still be online, but at the same time, it's all the same kind of performance, that kind of deal. Maybe bring back the old school Miraculum to do have a comic shop, that kind of deal. But that's a good idea. I love it. Uh, honestly, I haven't thought on the logistics besides the whole plan about tryouts. Basically, I do want to have stages of tryouts. We're going to whittle down the field from everyone to 12, then from 12 to 7. So yeah, that's pretty much a rundown on how it's gonna be. And I hope you guys have been enjoying just a few of those coach answers. Because, you know, unfortunately, we had these issues with the GM's powerful love giving such a great answer. And of course, having some really good nets, moving though, tech issues, and love real getting work getting in the way. So... Okay, we're good. We're good. Fascinate and Momo Ring making it happen. Unmuting those two in three, two, one. Welcome back, you two. Hello. We Hello. Fixed, uh, yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm, yes, yeah, yes. It's it's very good. Yeah, 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 very good. Okay, we're going to go Thank back you. into it. That was your coach intermission. I don't have to do it later on, but if you guys still have any questions yeah. for me, feel free to do so. Momo Ring, the floor is all yours. Again, the question is, who are you and what is your platform? And hello, good morning. Ano, good morning, talo. Good afternoon. Ay, good evening. I'm Momoring, also known as Chiaki. Nung 
mga beta days pa, mga unang days pa. So, yung mga mga matatagal na sa Overwatch, they know me as Chiaki, the former support 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 player for Yeah, dito. Support Hello? player for Popeye Gaming. Hello? Ayan. Yeah, 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 we can hear you. Don't worry. Ayan. Yun. Support player for uh, Popeye Gaming. Last, yung Overwatch Madness Philippines. Kami yung Dasma representative nun. Then, Ooh, Cavite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ma, yung dumaya pa na Cavite. Then, ayun, I've been managing a Ragnarok team na private server. Then, mga mga tournaments na nag nag evolve sa Ragnarok then i'm managing din sa mga guild you can search phonage phonage powerhouse ayun ayun ang guild namin so ako yung gm noon i've been talking to the sa mga GM, mga community managers na sa level up sa play park so ako yung nakikinig sa mga high position high position people then ang platform ko for Overwatch is to gain ano mabalik yung dating sigla ng Overwatch na lahat nag-enjoy na na lahat naglalaro nung afo, yung kahit bata nag nag ano, naglalaro ng Overwatch even na may buy yung Overwatch they will play so i will back to the community yung pinaka focus ko then s'yempre pag na yung na, nakabalik ka na sa community mo sa yung sponsor s'yempre mas mag, ano mas maganda yung feedback nila so makakuha tayo ng numbers doon na we can present them to to gain the sponsorship na makakatulong sa atin sa Overwatch you no know, World Cup so yun yung ano ko platform natin okay so i like that fascinate very very grounded approach so basically guys Boomerang Story has been an old school player from 2016 2017 that kind of thing uh, i believe they oh, yeah. purchased- The pro- 2016, in, mga yeah, 2016. They came in from a provincial team coming in to try and participate with the best the, the country has to offer. So what just happened there? Uh, Mobrain coming on back, trying to restore Overwatch to its former glory back in the good old days where IPT and Mineski reign supreme. That kind of deal. You know, you know about that, Mr. Fascinate. Uh, I'm. We're learning something. Like uh, yeah. I did not know you were Dichiaki before. Because yeah, I I remember playing with you like, or at least uh, uh if you know, the right? I'm pretty sure you're friends with Melvin, aka IDK. Oh, I think yeah. I met Got you. I met you from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yes. remember. Yeah, so, yeah. Honestly, yeah. look at this. Like, so, very, like so very players. small world. Yeah, very small world. So many players in I, the chat. Yeah. It's like, oh crap, that is yeah. that guy. I remember that guy. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. So you know, the Chiaki old Chiaki now Mobrang Story. 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 Mobrang So Momoring showing on up, and basically his platform really goes about showing the numbers, showing these communities that he has handled. He works with uh, within MMORPGs that Overwatch is something feasible, something he can support, and through his help, of course, he can lead it to the forefront with the good investment backing behind it. Yes, because the what I say, the sponsors, because the. Ang... Yeah. Ah uh, right. kasi yung mga sponsors kasi they la- ano they like the numbers kasi. Parang syempre business to. Uh, business yung yung trabaho nila. They, they will la- maglalabas sila ng pera technically syempre to support us sa Overwatch World Cup. Then syempre kailangan natin yung numbers na mapakita sa kanila to parang encourage them to support us na hey, we can back you ano dito. Pwede kayong kumita sa amin, parang ganun, parang mag-invest nyo, so mga ganun. Yeah, okay. So, be- very grounded approach here from Momoreng. I like it. I like that he's really looking to make it feasible. And that's the biggest thing right now as general manager. We have all these plans. It sounds great and everything. Like, ah, come on guys, World Cup's gonna be so fun. We're gonna be able to go down to Heim and everything. But someone's gonna have to pay for it. That's, that's some true. that someone's not gonna be Blizzard for Team PH. So very very investment heavy, and I'm glad Wolverine finally getting his tech issues done. We can move on to our next questions. Unfortunately, again, Nilavariel gonna come in later on in a later time. We'll, we'll probably give her some like bullet time. It's like, okay, so 
your question, my question, your question, that kind of thing. So let's move on to our Q&A. We'll move the floor to Power of Love. I already, I already asked you this question a while ago, if you guys remember. It is the same starting one. What have you done for the PH Overwatch scene? Take it away, Power of Love. Alright, so... Okay, so what have I done with the Overwatch community and the PH? Well, um... To be pres- uh, to be concise, um, I was able to uh, I was able to enable some Filipino players to start their careers in over open division. So um, during the time uh, in Overwatch Division twenty eighteen season two, uh, I was looking for players for uh, my team that I created before, and I actually got some players. Um, this is how I got into Overwatch, to be honest. Um, if you're familiar with Redux, I know a lot of people know Redux. He was in my team before. Um, so yeah, um, he introduced me to Overwatch, and that's how I got in there. So with that, I was able to uh, interact more with the people, especially uh, during the old scrims and uh, this new pugs. So yeah, basically, my con- my um, contribution to the community is being able to um, enable them to join uh in in um teams as well as interact with them have fun with them um so yeah also shout out sa mga nanonood ngayon thank you guys for support <laughs> yeah so yun thanks Yes. So basically, guys, uh, I know this story. I know this old story. Once upon a time, there were three little teams. There was Acidia, there was Superbia, and there's Invidire. They're basically mix match teams. Some of them having a lot of PH members. Some of them had done it, uh, didn't. And Sacred Sash Power Flop came into the community looking for players and ended up having you know more of a family at the end right now he's in tsea with his close pals of the ubi gang that kind of deal so you really can see overrush rooting him to the more local community and that's what he's done for the community give opportunities for professional play yeah good 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 stuff there from power of love moving to the floor momo ring same question what have you done for the ph overwatch community uh, yun. Um, I've been the graphic designer for Mineski.net nung mga interview days nila sa Overwatch. So, yung mga sila Brightside, sila Cold Snap, sila Eldud, mga na-interview nila. So, I I made the banner for them for Mineski.net. So, then, yun. <laughs> ano din? Amateur pro player din ako dati. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, all. That, that's all? Okay. So, same background. Back in the day, professional play and you know you can never go wrong with that impact because without professional players where is the community gonna go where is the community gonna look up to it really goes to show more rooted in the professional scene uh working with a few of the old pro i heard LJ. that's such a long, long yeah. time name. Sure. that's way too bring up ago. really old names no ah. and being being a, being a professional player or having a background of it is uh definitely helpful because I know, being a being a pro means you have connections to you know, people, especially Mineski. If if like we can potentially with you having connections with Mineski, that's a potential you know that's potential sponsor or uh, that that would be great. Like that would be really helpful for you on your campaign. Yeah, absolutely. And especially to Team Philippines, if ever. Uh, Team PH was what old pros back in the day, 2016. Of course, Mr. Fascinate was an integral part of that. And it really goes to show, you know, we've heard about 2016 a lot because that was really the last time we even had a chance at the World Cup. <laughs> Dude, I remember, I remember, I remember what, what was that? I remember old school Overrush where all it was, it wasn't even bugs. It was, it was like scrims, that kind of deal. It was all about it was all about giving teams like a tournament kind of kind of thing, even though it didn't have a prize and had eight casters. So that was pretty ridiculous. So what do you think about those responses, Fascinate? Um yeah, basically uh knowing that he's uh a previous or uh, played professionally previously, uh means that uh or at least I'm I think he has uh enough connections to to pull uh, sponsors, <laughs> and I think he knows, naman yung mga ano yung how to make 
things feasible yung mga plans niya yung mga plans in his campaign mga ganun so yeah yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I heard okay okay wait uh i'll try to figure something out so finally the third piece of the puzzle Nila Vernil oh, is sure. in. She's here. So, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. Hi. Noisy. Don't worry. Hello, <laughs> hello. Let me, let me, let me Welcome. just reel it back a little bit. Let me reel it back real quick. So, first things first, Nila Varyal, who are you, and what's the platform? Hello. Okay, I am so sorry, guys, that I am late to this call because I am in the middle. I was. <laughs> in the middle of the nationals as courtside reporters wow. so um yes and just in case you guys don't know, it's signal ultra warriors who are the first grand champions of the nationals the two conference anyway um so yeah i had to go back and forth so i'm really really sorry once again um for missing this out uh anyway yeah i'll get right into it so um i am totally not used to campaigning because I hate patting myself on the back too much and I don't like sounding like a hard sell. Uh, that's not to say that others sound like this or that others do that, but personally, I don't like doing that for myself. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyway, hi, guys. My name is Nika, IGN Nila Varial, or Nila for short. So, I'm going to start off with my background in Overwatch, which admittedly is very casual. Um, I've been playing consistently since the, um, since, the first, since the game first came out all through like the five man mercy reses and six symmetry third but only casually i basically just played nightly with a group of friends and sometimes we meet up watch the owls it's that casual so um i've streamed the game and this is getting in more into my start in esports because last year uh so playbook esports approached me to be a partner streamer and of course i streamed overwatch um but honestly i'm a little more introverted than other streamers and due to connection problems i haven't streamed in a while and this is why you guys know i didn't go for community lead i i'm also about like just what um uh, mid to highest gold in rank and stuck in elo hell which is why i didn't go for coach haha <laughs> so i'm so okay this campaign is starting to sound a little bit bleak because I told you I'm not used to campaigning at all but now for my real life background which hopefully sounds a lot better so by day I am a producer writer production manager host performer and an esports correspondent for yes the nationals and ESPN 5 so I'll get into each of those in detail so I've worked as a host for casual and corporate events. Uh, I've hosted for ASEAN, the GG Network, and the Japanese Embassy. I've given TED Talks, and I've been active in the geek community, geek and cosplay community since about 2007. I am revealing my age here. Don't comment on that. <laughs> I'm affiliated with like the following geek organizations as an admin member. The New Worlds Alliance, Geek Fight Trivia Night, Fight Saber Philippines, and the Philippine Lightsaber Guild. So... Um, as a producer, that's my day job, I've produced several marketing campaigns and social media content for corporate accounts. And these include brands such as SM Cyberzone and Trego, which is the logistics company of Ayala, Century Properties uh, via First Park Homes, and Anytime Fitness and Generica Pharmacy, where I also worked as a talent coordinator. So I've also worked for GMA News Online and Summit Media. So my background, my bread and butter is really on the production. Ooh. Oh, hello? Yeah, that's, un yeah, that's unfortunate. The cat. Uh, okay, good. Please continue. This is okay. actually oh, so amazing so far. Okay. Yes. Um, I've also produced a full-length documentary for GMA News that won a jury award, and I've directed a short film which got shortlisted in last year's Cinemalaya. So, and you may have seen have may have you may have seen my face in some commercials. So, um, somehow earlier this year, I landed myself a gig being an esports correspondent for ESPN Five and the Nationals. I auditioned. They saw something they liked amidst tons of people who were much better qualified than I am, kind of like here, and suddenly I was working on the Nationals. And I'm still here, so I must be doing something right because they haven't fired me yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, please don't if you're watching this. And that is my experience in esports. So honestly, in terms of community, my fellow candidates, I'm pretty sure are a lot more qualified than I am. I am a total noob in the community. I didn't even know it existed. But I hope that my real life background helps me out in this campaign. If it helps, my rather unusual career was built on just me jumping headfirst into all of these fields. You're going to scratch your heads when you hear about my actual educational knew nothing about film, somehow it's become one of my career paths. I knew nothing about hosting, it's one of my day jobs. I knew nothing about esports, but I'm right here talking to you guys from the Nationals. So I might not know much about the Overwatch community, but I'm definitely eager to learn and absorb everything, as in everything that I do, I give my all for it. So if this position does go to me, because I do believe that I can offer a lot, 
in terms of skill set, knowledge, and experience in the creative and corporate fields, network, and versatility. Uh, you can definitely bet I'll bring in my experience in production to produce some awesome marketing content as well as my network for potential sponsors. So, um, yeah, in any case, I believe this is going to be a huge team effort. If I do get the position, I'm going to need all of your help. And if somebody else gets the position, I'll still be there to help. So, yeah, regardless. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's Me a, in a nutshell. That's a, <laughs> that that's resume a, kept, that's a, that's a big wow. Okay, more so, impressive guys, than the time. Guys, as a guys, guys. We have cracked it up to 11 in terms of the professionalism here. Here comes the real world. Here comes the connections and... <laughs> I mean, if I even had just one of those jobs, I'd probably be a little more satisfied with my, with how I make money, that kind of deal. But you know, it is what it is. Amazing. No, 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 mayor. Don't worry about it. Amazing, amazing resume and I'm... from Nila. But go ahead. Oh wait, the double pala yung ano natin yung voice. Oh really? Yeah, fix it up. Echo. Echo. Yeah, but as I was saying, it's actually really amazing. So if within her accomplishments, within her knowledge, within how her career has taken this path, this path turned into another U-turn, that kind of thing, we can really see that the passion for Overwatch is within her. Again, it does sound like she is more of a casual player, but it's sometimes, guys, you don't need to be hardcore into a game to be the best you can be for the community. And at the same time, having all this real world kind of background and this very professional tone in how to conduct things very very impressive for a general manager position so good stuff there nila with your platform and you know that long introduction about you and still the floor is yours since you are one question behind everyone i do want to keep everyone in the same page i do apologize a little bit too far love and home ring because i will give the floor back to you one more time i think this will be a little shorter compared to you about you same question to the two what have you done for the ph overwatch community um, okay, is, is it me? Is it still me? Yeah, it's <laughs> only yep. you. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> so um, anyway, as I mentioned, I have like almost, I have done absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, I am not connected to the community at all. I actually did not know that there was an Overwatch community. So you can believe that what like when um, when my friend Shock said, hey, I'll add you to this group and that group, I'm like, there's a group? And I've been playing yeah. Overwatch alone? Every night. <laughs> Welcome to the group. Don't worry, the group has hello, groups. Hello. The group has yes, groups. That's the, the group has groups. The, 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 groups. The, the big group shows up when someone types lobby up in the Discord. That's pretty yeah. much it. <laughs> the, <laughs> okay, I'll probably do that tonight. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, check that but, out. Yeah, the, um, full disclosure, I have not done anything. Total noob here. Yeah, that, that's that's okay. Okay. So very honest. That's a very honest answer. It's like she's not making stuff up. She's like, I play, that's it. That's a show. And it's also great that she knows her strengths and weaknesses, as uh, she told uh, on her on her, I don't know, on her resume a while ago. And that can be seen as a great trait uh, because at least you know uh, you know where you lack, so and you know where your strengths are. So you focus on that strength, and that's what that's exactly what she did. She she didn't go for coaching since she she doesn't think that she's good enough, and she didn't go for community leads since she doesn't. Um, no, uh, she doesn't. What the fuck? Oh, sorry, language. Oh, she, didn't, okay. she didn't, <laughs> she didn't, she isn't really uh, immersed in the community. So she went for general manager instead, since uh, that's that's where her strength is, or at, at least that's where her she believes her strength is. Yeah. And um, that's really that's really nice to to hear from you. Yeah, very, very impressive stuff. And we're moving Hooray, on to. I'm glad. Yeah, we're moving on to the next question. We're going to go back to the format. So you got to take your turns, guys. Finally, we have the trio of GMs ready to go. Tech issues as well as productions won't be stopping us anytime soon. As we move on into the next question, of course, we'll move back with the floor going over to Power of Love. And what is that question? Well, let me hype it up real quick. I think this is the question everyone has been asking from the moment this has been announced from the moment it has been announced that you know it's all about being funded by yourself first things first power of love how would you secure a sponsor for team ph do you have any foundations right now you're working on do you have anyone in the bag that you can tell us about that might be able to help your case in being the gm 
Okay, so yeah, it's time for the serious stuff now, guys. So, <laughs> eto, um, let's see. So, basically, uh, my plan for this one is we should um start with our social media presence. Like, how do we show first the people that we are here? Then we move to uh, having a website, siguro. But this should be on the next one. Sorry, pero it's part of a plan, kasi. Yeah, it's okay. Go um. Ahead. Yeah, so having a website shows that we are professional. Like it, it bumps up our professionalism so much. So with that, we could we'll be able to convince more of the sponsors or like our target sponsors. Uh, na we're not just some some people, some group of people na looking for sponsorship or something. Like we have to be legit. So this is the serious stuff now. We need to be legit, talaga. Um, aside from that, like. I'm nasabi na rin kanina to ni Momo like on the player stats like the, the numbers are very important. Uh now the and the team potential also we need to market that properly. Um as for the um sorry for the entities uh corporation individuals um actually I have it yet started on contacting but I do have some former uh lists lists <laughs> of us uh, sponsors na next sponsors before in my projects uh, as well as some na unfortunately rejected uh, majority of our projects um, so uh, being a civil engineer um, ang background ko would be mostly on la land um, land developers uh, construction companies uh, but that doesn't like stop there i also have some connections with Food, food and beverages um, companies and other media media partners, radio stations. Uh, although I'm not sure if it's that big, um, but yeah, uh, no specifics yet. But my target uh, in general would be like uh, big companies like SM, Ayala, PLDT radio radio partners and other media partners, and maybe some uh, media. Uh, sorry, uh, social media influencers if they can. Uh, and if they will, so let's hope for the best. As of now, uh, it's all plans for now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So plans, plans, plans. Mr. Fascinate, basically, summary is very yes, out please. of the box. Yes. Very out of the box, not esports related. Go with the mainstream. So it seems like Mr. Power of Love here gonna be taking Overwatch to the more mainstream level, give it the, that kind of exposure, and get the support from there. Very interesting. Honestly, I would say. That's not how I would go about it, but it really is the most financially what do you call this? What do you call it? It's like it's like a treasure. It's a treasure trove. If you get one of those big names, that's pretty much yeah, holla holla get the dollar. So hopefully mm. those plans do pan out. Because next on the list, Momo Ring, same question. How would you secure a response for Team PH? Hello, hello, hello. Wait, hello? wait a sec. Uh, it's not showing up. Uh, hello. Okay. Hello, Momoring. Are you there? Momoring. Uh, hello. Are you there, good sir? I miss you, and I need you. And now I wonder it's, if I can fall into a sky. Oh no! Oh no! He's gone. Momoring, where have you gone? So yeah, I think we'll give him. I think we. Uh, oh, it's a dis okay. That's oh, dude, he got Tana snap. That's a Tana snap right there. Oh wait, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. Did... He's back and at the back. There you go. I haven't taken Hello? issues again. So, guys, 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 wait. Before you start, even in the QA, we get the pugs treatment. Are you serious? <laughs> even here, it happens, but it's okay. It's normal. It's part of the experience. Momoring, the floor is all yours. That's part of the Doc's PH stream. Unfortunately. Hello? Oh no, same unfortunate Unfortunate scenario, issue. dude. Yeah, it's just, just not happening. I thought I thought the phone fixed it already. But I guess I guess we'll do this for Momo. Since he's been struggling, I will be his mouthpiece. Feel free to type your answers down. And when your net is back up, ready to go, we'll give you one chance each to your question. If your net is okay, you talk. If not, I talk. Okay? I think that sounds good. Makes this flow a lot better. So we'll move first to Nila. Uh, she can answer the question first. How would you secure a sponsor for Team BH? Hello, guys. Okay, so as I've mentioned, um, I have already um, 
built, I think, a pretty um, extensive network um, with my corporate work. So, um, and of course, my work with the nationals has expanded that network that, to include connections in esports. So, um, I worked with several known um, big PR and marketing agencies as well as directly to brands. So, I'll definitely tap into my connections for that so just um off the top of my head probably sm cyberzone uh hp omen maybe global though i'm not sure the ethics of that because they already have their own uh, i know they already have their own esports team so i don't know that's just off the top of my head yeah well, so already it's just like okay these are the names like go for and she has a step one a step a plan already to go for it and i like that i like that it's a very decisive answer it's like this is first and the moment if it happens then good if it doesn't happen we'll be able to find uh, someone next so also yeah. uh i was uh when you mentioned hp omen i was that was really uh i think uh diba kasi nag sponsor din yung hp omen before so over, was that overwatch overwatch yes. league or they were i, I believe overwatch they were the official sponsor of the overwatch league yeah so official have... sponsor yeah the yes. official sponsor Yes, so um, I actually have connects to the PR agency that runs the campaigns mm. HP Omen wow. here in the Philippines. Okay, okay. That's I'll, really I want to get into that actually. So back in the day, I mean, I not really back in the day. It's been it's been a thing that of all things, all the surprising thing was HP Omen wasn't the one supporting Overwatch in the PH, and maybe through Nilo it might be able to happen. But back in the day, you know who supported us? It was Predator. Predator, uh, yeah. Predator, not Predator once, and Zowie, diba? twice. No, Zowie's the next year, but Predator was oh, a okay. very long time sponsor for Warwatch, especially for what the was it the Candles Cup was that involved? They also had Heroes Uprising, of course, the yeah. APCC event, the ESGS event, lots of support there from the Acer brand. So maybe just maybe since there is no real big brand supporting it now, maybe HP Open can get in. Maybe they'll decide to pick that one up. That'll be very interesting because they do have the roots. They do have the roots from the Overwatch League. Okay, so now I'm going to put the floor to Momoring, but it is still going to be me talking. So Momoring says he can secure sponsorships for Team PH through his connections on the esports and the Korean communities, especially with the Korean com company that knows Overwatch. He's going to be able to show our numbers, our achievements, and hopefully garner support from there. He's been also very involved with the K-pop community. That's actually interesting. So maybe through music, we can mm, get that's some a, foundation. That's a yeah, that's really, a, dude. Yeah, dude. This is a Korea PH coalition. Yeah. Mo PH is bringing Beat Momo Ring. I guess you can really see why his name is like that. K-pop fan and all. And an interesting answer. It's a very again. It's it's a unique would, approach. It's unique because yes. I wouldn't expect. For someone to go abroad for it, like yeah. you know, but that'd be really cool if we can get a foreign sponsor, not only their team but also for us. Then yeah, more power to us, dude. We can be little little soul, little SK. We won't have the imagine, same result. We won't have number imagine one. Imagine you know, twice, twice advocating for Overwatch Team Philippines. Oh my oh, god! Oh dude. my god! Maybe oh, that's dude. why everyone lined up today for it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's dude. true. And I guess people now making the chat a buy and sell for that twice concert. But yeah, okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to see. I'm surprised by that answer, but at the same time, it does uh, show a different kind of approach. It is very unique when in terms of the answers. Power of Love more mainstream. Nilla more of her connect and more involved as well as more related to the esports scene. Momring, let's go across the pond. So yeah, good answers all abound. Hey, go, Mr. Fascinates. If you were to get anyone, just like pretend a random brand, who can who who would you get to sponsor this this uh, the PH endeavor? Um, thinking, uh, like uh, the first thing that comes to my mind if I if I really want to uh get a sponsor would be definite. Oh my God, Chow King. Shut up. Oh my god, casting. Not, that... uh, not like, uh, uh probably the, the, what I want, uh, in my opinion, uh, in my own honest opinion, is Logitech. I don't know. I like Logitech, uh, peripherals. I like Logitech, uh, stuff. Pero, if you really want it to be more feasible, I think you'd have to go for Predator since 
they've been very very supportive of Overwatch Philippines uh community and um uh, the Overwatch Philippines scene. Ta pero uh, there are a lot of potentials talaga eh. like you don't uh in these kind of uh events you don't know where you can find your sponsors. Male mo like what they said Mr. Shomai bigla na lang mag-sponsor, diba? Like whatever. Kung ano talaga eh. It's um it's ha- it's up to the general manager to secure. The most important thing is that they enable us to be uh uh to play, to be able to play in the international scene. I think that's what that's what is more uh on the more important note. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Anyone who's willing to help, we should uh, take that help. And now this leads into that next question because we were talking about sponsors. We were talking about you know uh, how these guys who are these guys going to go for and now the real question is how we're going to step step into the world of how how will they start off world cups ads marketing and communication you can say this in another way what forms of infrastructure will they be building and focus on maintaining so these can include social medias maybe a website maybe even a physical address that'd be really cool so we'll see what these three have in store for us first things first power of love going to be first on the board and what do you have to say about this one yeah, so as I said earlier in the question, uh, question one, I mean, the previous question rather, uh, like we need to build our social media presence first. So uh, going back to the uh, things that the community lead said, like all of them, uh, we, we need to uh, engage with the community also there. So before that, as, aside from the media, uh, media, social media presence, yeah, I said that we need a website because I believe uh, this goes to experience actually. Uh, was uh, companies um, want a professional uh, website? Because yeah, I don't. We don't want to look like just some people who are asking for money. Some group. Uh, we have to be official. So aside from the website, we can we can just stop there. Cannot just stop there. Um, we need uh, uh, professional emails also for our uh, for our people who will be contacting the sponsors. Like we can't just uh, j- just be emailing them or like approaching them by our own personal emails. I mean it's okay, but to be more professional, we need to show them that uh, we have credibility. We have this. We have that. So going forward from there, uh, like. I said the uh, community lead said we need like the discord server to engage and interact with the gaming community to get them more informed uh with what are what things are happening and also fb group because obviously you're filipinos we're very engaged in facebook um uh, for the general supporters even though they're not gamers uh maybe they want to support philippines because you know philippine filipino pride pinoy pride and stuff like that um so yeah uh just aside from that, maybe and this is not really a physical or like a digital infrastructure, but we need to set a timeline, like a timeline that should be followed. Like we have time, we have time before the Overwatch World Cup, right? But okay. we cannot waste the time given for us. So we need a timeline set uh, for us to work through and, you know, meet our targets and uh, make it possible for the Philippines to go to World Cup and experience it fully. Right. So yeah, that's my answer. Thank you. A very well-rounded answer. I would say that this really goes into the most important story of life, Tortoise and the Hare. Slow and steady wins the race. We have a lot of time to work on it. And it's very important that we start on our roots. I, I like that he mentioned the emails. I actually probably forgot yeah. about it to talk about it. It'll be something else should obviously show up during the process. But like thinking about... I was thinking like websites, Discord, that kind of thing. What a uh, freaking portfolio, maybe. But emails are very uh, small very details. Small details, uh, yeah. yeah. Small details matter, and yeah. uh, Power of Love definitely remembers all of that. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to really entertain an email from a guy named Noob Pastor Sixty Nine. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe some guy <laughs> from Official Gen GM PH World Cup. I'd, I'd read that. I'd read that email. So. Next, moving on, we're gonna get into Momo Ring. Again, we'll give him one chance. Momo, come on, let me see if I, you can talk or not. But he does have something to say. I can say it. Yeah, go. 
Okay, okay, that's a, I think that's a big no. Okay, that's a big no, unfortunate. But here we go. Uh, just just to quickly say something about, from the previous question, he is very connected with the Korean Culture Center. So really, very, 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 very K-pop, very, very Korean invested. I think we can get some, probably some free ice cream along the way. I would love some pang toa. But on this question, how we start off World Cup ads marketing communication? He will start with something very, very mainstream. You can go for FP streaming to get attention. You can also talk to influencers within the streaming community to share the stream, to do so your own content. You really bring out the forefront for it. They can also do you know community gatherings like uh, LAN tournaments uh, for Team PH. So it's pretty much show matches. Really, just make. Team PH accessible, make them someone you can hang out, rely on, and of course, besides, you know, besides the usual FB, Twitter, Instagram, just have the content from those meetups show off that Team PH is a fun place to be. The community really is well rounded, and that is the marketing in itself. So very grassroots approach, right? reminiscent of a few community lead answers a while ago. And it is all about making those meetups marketable. Well, can work, can work. Uh, I like this enough. But at the same time, you know, uh, it's, it's a safe answer, that's for sure. We're hoping to see a little more after that one. But it's very, very consistent with how the PH market works. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, Nila, your turn. How will you start off World Cup's ads, marketing, and communication? All right. Well, I definitely agree with the others. Uh, definitely. Um, social media pages and streams as well. Uh, as you all know, a lot of the Overwatch League players are very, very popular on their streams. And yes, I also agree with the website because SEO is still super, super important these days. I mean, when companies search for a brand, the website still matters, even though they're not gonna stay on the website um, and they'll probably interact more with them on social media, the website is still important for in terms of legitimacy and making sure that the brand is existent, uh, exists online. Probably look towards a content arm for the team and of course the World Cup experience, maybe features uh, on each member of the team and possibly like a highlight reel so that when we pitch to possible sponsors, we have something that's uh, ready. Yeah, so I guess um, uh, off the top of my head, just like immediate first steps, those will probably be uh, it. Yeah, that's, that's first step. Pretty much it. That's the question that we got to answer. Very, very basic. Besides everything else, just all about their expertise. What do you think about that one fascinates? It's the right idea, right? I think it's a proper idea to work on. Yes, definitely. Um, small steps. First, uh, I think... Uh, uh, it's nice that uh, or, or or they know uh, at least have an idea of where to go or or the pathway they want to go to. So I think that's that can be a, a good sign of reassurance that they know uh, they know what they should do technically. Yeah. It's we're just looking for basically if these guys do have a plan because uh, for a general manager. You just gotta, you know, we just gotta be responsible about things because they're gonna be in charge of not really com only communicating with us but also with Blizzard. It's a very big deal. And if you're already lost at the start, how can we yes. have the confidence? How can we have the confidence Definitely. that you're gonna be doing a good job? So good, good on for all our candidates right now for giving us very concise answers. It's something we honestly expect. We already had ideas, website, Discord, meetups, streams, emails. Very good, very good, and just be as professional as can be. And that's the thing about being a general manager general. guys yeah no oh, come on fascinate what you got about being a gm tell me about it oh uh, no, no, <laughs> what do you no no look look okay you've been you were part of the world cup back then and i oh, believe okay, the right. world cup there was still a semblance of the the committee so yes what do you remember about uh, the support structure behind that okay uh a little a little background of uh how uh how the world cup was uh structured back then um, basically, every country is eligible. Like every single country, as long as uh, people can vote, people can vote for you. Um, you can basically enter the uh, team. Uh, the way it worked was people would vote for uh, three players. Um, 
uh, yeah, there was three players, and then um, the most, uh, the player with the most votes gets to be on the roster. It's basically just six people, and then um, the highest, the highest player to have the most votes would get to be the captain, and then. Um, wait, actually, there was four lang ata, no, Ducks? I think that was oh, four. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was very Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, it was four. It was, it was four. It was four only. So, and the other, the last two will be chosen by the captain, the the player with the highest uh, votes. So, it was kind of a, there was a, a little bit of, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, parang issue fr- from Blizzard. Kasi uh, there were just streamers or uh, YouTubers na got, uh, a lot of votes that became captains and then you'd get like um, you know just casual players getting into the team in a world cup diba? Parang it, yeah. it sounds like um, it defeats the purpose of being competitive so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was kind of a mess it was kind of a mess I remember but I remember at... something sorry to drop you I remember something like it's other countries they were just putting the popular streamers in yeah yeah, yeah. That, actually yeah that's it, true. it was such a pain for so as fascinates pointed out so you, they picked three four three or four uh, yeah it was four it was four it four was players four. I remember four. and the top one is uh, their co- coach and the coach picks the oh. other two but at the same time so Not the coach, top captain. one it was captain, captain, captain captain rather so the top one is GM and then your lowest member is a popular streamer, but he's only gold. So you're bringing a gold, bringing a plat, that kind of deal to the World Cup. Where even if we enjoy our more average skill better than it's still, you're not supposed. To, that's not where they're supposed to be. Not to be playing. They're here to support, and that is why Blizzard moved on to the committee approach instead. Is that popular streamer better for community lead? Someone very big brain, put them on coach. Of course, anyone who's really responsible, put them on GM. So you know. It's always been about leading. That's the thing. From yeah. captain lead to the community lead to now really having all that power. And speaking of that power, speaking of that leadership, the general manager still has a say in what the coach and the community lead does. Community lead does go to the GM for approval in social media. The roster, the roster has to be approved by the general manager and has to be submitted by the general manager based on the recommendations from the coach. So... Saying that, what approach will you take in leading the other two departments? So there are many choices. You can go for hands-on, hands-off, just let them be, make it your own, that kind of thing. You know, every style of government has to start from somewhere. And let's start things off with Power of Love. What will your approach be in leading the other two departments? Uh, okay, so yeah, I didn't mention this in the previous um, question because I wanted to save it for this one. Because I was also preparing not just like a like we have three uh, main committee right the, the committee heads like the community lead coach and the general manager uh so what i want other than this is to have an extended committee like even committees of committee so uh to relate this i i prepared actually something but i'll make it just short so i want a finance team to handle the money handling i want a logistic team to handle the physical requirements for hotels, bookings, visas, uh, documentation, secretariat for the paperwork and other um, paper related or like, you know, the brute for the brute work stuff uh, for the sponsorship, a sponsorship team to focus on the sponsorship or dev team to engage in the community committee development and player development and as well social media and programs um, teams. So why do I want to relate this to this one? Because I want collaboration. Because I, like I said before, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the carry, like quote unquote, I'm not the carry here. I'm just here to support everyone and to make the decisions that I think would be the best for everyone based on what uh, the coach and the community and the, uh, and the community itself uh, is showing and saying. So yeah, with that, I want to say that the people voted for the coach and the community leads uh, because they want them to have a say on things. So we need to work together rather than me or like whoever uh, becomes the GM to be overseeing everything. Of course, I'll be handling or will be handling the majority of logistics, sponsorships, uh, and other um, administrative uh, and logistical stuff. But yeah, for that's why I want an org- organizational development team because I want them to go and help the coach uh, in making the right decision. Maybe like we have some water, water viewers, uh, some assistant coaches, 
um, some people who can uh, focus on the players themselves and as well as the social media team so that our community lead would have the power would have the um, would have the avenues to you know mabigay nila yung best nila as we as we heard from them earlier they really want to serve and show that they are in uh, in this to interact with the community itself so yeah um with that uh, I, I really want collaboration rather than just me uh, deciding on something i want everyone to have their say i'll be listening and i'll be there to um give everyone the best decision that should be in the overwatch world cup uh team so yeah okay so from making teams to making teams i think i think we have a team here mr fascinate i think <laughs> i think we're here in the same thing but this is actually a very smart approach i have heard of other teams do this for the previous years they have these volunteers for different departments and yes yes I've i mean the well. thing is you're allowed to have as many volunteers as you have i mean if you won't yes. really want to pay them that kind of thing if you do have the funding go ahead the only requirements for blizzard is those 10 three committee members and seven players to move on to anaheim besides that it's all fair game and i like this sacred is showing yes, that he's he's, dude, wait, he's showing that he really wants to get the best of the best for these different positions, not only for GM, coach, and community lead, but also things like finance, logistics, bookings, that kind of thing. We, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to get to the hotel, how, how we're going to get food, those things. Those things are very realistic. And uh, uh, Power of Love here is showing that he's trying to find the proper experts for those uh, things. So, Mr. Fascinate, what are you going to say? Oh, basically what you said, because I don't know, um, just, just three... Um like yung three members ng committee that won't be enough to be honest because uh, i think people might get the wrong idea na um just the uh, three uh, general manager community leader community lead and um coach will be enough for to run a team no uh, pro- professional teams in overwatch leagues definitely have more members in their um um in the background it's, just, it's not just like a player's coach gm it's not it doesn't work like that there's a lot of people involved in um in in how their um organization works and um i think power of love is showing that he knows he knows um all the um like how it runs basically He's, re- he's showing he's very leadership material, that he knows that he's not one, a one-man army. He knows that yeah, he yeah. the things he can't really do alone. And he is, yeah, it like takes that. a lot of maturity to be able to acknowledge that. So that's a good answer there for Power of Love. One more try, Momoring. Come on, come on. Let me hear the static. Let me hear it. <laughs> Hello. It. Oh, it's oh. a real voice. Come on, I heard the real a, voice. A sentence? It was a, no, it was a word. Can we complete the sentence? Come on, oh. say something. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. That false hope right there, but at least it got my heart pumping. Don't, so it's, it's don't all good. worry, my friend. It's don't all worry, good. my it's friend. All good. It's well, all good. Again, to be the voice of Momo Ring, let's get into this one. So, first things first, he has divided his answer into, uh, answer into two, rather. So, he says on coaching, he will just leave it to the coach to get into it. Very straight to the point. It's uh, He's been a little washed up. It's been a while since he's been playing. So, he puts all his fate within the coaching structure. So uh, that's, a, that's a very good way to go about it. If you don't really have too much experience of uh, current Overwatch, it's best not to get involved, not to put your nose into roster creation. But on, on the other hand, on community engagement, it's all going to be about marketing. So first things first, the, the sponsorship needs to be secured. So he's saying that if you secure the sponsor, it will just be us running off the ground very very quickly there will be no stress on either the community or the team because we can only focus on gameplay so very very straight to the point here from momoring all about getting tasks done and we'll see how that's gonna pan out hopefully he can prove himself up to the task fascinate what you think about that very very simple but very straight to the point uh yeah it um uh, it's very concise um you know he, he just basically told us what he wants straight to the point um he 
he um how to put it um in a way na tr- he would trust like whoever gets voted into a certain uh position he would definitely have uh, we will put his trust on them to to do their uh job and his basically his job is to make their jobs easier Be- uh, he will he will focus on whatever uh the team needs to be able to um secure um uh to be able to secure their uh spot in the uh, Overwatch World Cup to be able to fly to be uh to do everything um and um to make things easier for the players as well yeah, and that is the way to do it get rid of stress you can focus on the game you know that feeling right yes that's like oh, yes. we that's didn't have the all best these thing issues. the player can can have it's basically like, remove oh, everything yeah except- everything that um uh gives uh um Like, ko ano man iniisip ng players, just leave it all to them, to the to your support staff. Just just focus on your game. Just focus on um improving. Focus on team play. Focus on synergy, and you'll you'll be the best team. Yeah, and that's Papa. why people get that's why people get managers <laughs> for teams. Like you might yes, hear, so you might see you sometimes that your manager is like, why why bother? Why would you need that? But but when you're mm. really focusing down, think of it as a sport. You don't want your Players to be wasting time getting refreshments. You want while your players wasting time booking, uh, yeah. like the court to play and that kind of deal. You want them to just focus on getting better, getting better at the game, and that's the same thing in esports. So good answer overall. Every sports. Every, Every sports. sports. We're, we're all sports now. Gaming yeah. is sports. There you go. That's the show. So Nilla, it's been a while. Uh, how you been doing? Uh, same question. What approach will you take in leading the other two apartments? <sighs> Uh, so okay, so as in a business, you have a creative side and a corporate side. So um, possibly for me, maybe the creative side can handle the content, the stories around the team, branding, and then we'll have the corporate side for number crunching and marketing, and the heavy lifting, so to say. I'd probably look into having a content arm help out our community lead, a team that's responsible for churning out the content for our community lead to share, and assistant managers, of course, production managers. A documentation team um, and additional marketing people to help, but I mean, you know, it's not a huge. We're not a huge corporate structure, so I don't think sort of uh, being hands off or or limiting people to labels or roles will benefit everyone, especially since we're just starting. So I I do agree with everybody that will need everybody's help with everything, and that involves even the community. So like in order to solidify. A- now is very community centric especially since as we know we have a very niche market so we start with the community and work from there make it inclusive and fun and welcoming maybe through videos or small events where the team is visible and maybe they'd even be the hosts so we want to make people be part of the community and because when you build a brand you, the community has to go with it so um yeah very community centric all friends here <laughs> i like how she segments things into two it's a it's a coin Yes. It's two sides of the same coin. There's community and there's corporates, and she's really understanding that there is a business side, especially on the GM. Like for then, you say community lead. Okay, they work with the community. You say coach. They work with the community still because all the players. But in the GM, it is not just a dabble, but it is a face full of the real world. Because being GM really has to be handling not only trying to get there, but also everything that's going on there. And he goes to show that is more of a wide world view. It's more of like, okay, I'm understand that these are the two parts, and I'm gonna be focusing as much as I can on them. But at the same time, of course, let the community do its job, run its course, and just be there to support. So yeah, I like that. I like that yeah, too. Yeah, and as Calderon has said, um, it uh, her experience is really showing on our on a corporate department side, um, and it's uh. Yeah, I do believe that even if you lack um, the um, presence in the community, as long as um, I think I think you don't really need to know much about the um, uh, they call this uh, the community. I mean, not not that it's like a a small thing. It's actually uh, it kind of it is a big thing to be at least immersed in the com- community. But yeah. Um, With her knowledge, her experience in in the side of business, I think she would do a great a great job, even if she uh, isn't that um, close or even immersed in the uh, uh, Overwatch Philippines community at least. 
Yeah, and this is the point we're doing the summit, guys. Uh, I I was just like listening, watching, checking everyone out, and you know, I I just realized that everyone needs a platform. And we need a proper platform because what I've been seeing is uh, everyone does have a good campaign. Everyone does have uh, some good ideas behind this, but they're only really preaching to the choir. The only people who know about their stuff is their community. So it's para patro patro bahan lang that kaya din para mihan. And with this, we're able to intermingle. We're able to show everyone what these guys have in store for their plans. It's very very impressive, and I love how everyone has been very professional about it. So it really goes to show the success of the summit due to the fact that the community as well as the candidates really care about what they're doing. I'm just glad that we're able to give them an avenue do for it. So now we're down to our last question for our side, and it is the classic one. The same thing we asked them. It's very straight to the point, very straightforward. Why and why not should I vote for you? Same sim- simple rules. Give me one reason why I should. Give me one one reason why I shouldn't. Time to self evaluate. Let's begin with power of love. Okay, so I'll just make this short, right? So yeah, basically vote for me because I have experience um, in the business, well, quote unquote, business side and the sponsorship marketing publicity, uh, as well as project management and organization management, as well as that I am involved with the community and I am familiar with some faces here. Uh, don't vote for me if you do not agree with my plans. So I don't want you to vote for me if you, if you don't agree with me because it's, it's just that simple. But I assure you, I would deliver what is expected of you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yes. I, I, I like how he really just brought in the core of that. These are my plans. If you like them, go for it. If you don't, then go full for it. There, there are two other amazing candidates. So at the same time, I'm trying to prove my worth and my amazingness to you, the community. So very, very grounded. Very, very realistic there from Power of Love. We're gonna get some, you know, gonna garner some good bounty points from that one. So we're gonna skip Momoring real quick. Nilo will, uh, the floor is all yours to Nilo. We'll go to Momoring after her speech. So why or why not? Should I vote for you? Okay, so biggest pro, my experience and knowledge in production and management, both in creative and corporate endeavors, and I guess my network. Um, do uh, Biggest con, uh, I guess my non-experience and non-knowledge in this community in particular. I think that part is obvious. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's all about, you know, just showing us that here, I am from the real world. Here, I am from out of the community. I want to be part of the community, but I understand if you're not going to vote me because this is only my first dip into the Overwatch pond. And that is honestly one of the biggest things you have to think about someone you pretty much have not heard of in the Overwatch community. Like, sure, I've heard of Nila in the pizza I buy. I've heard about her in the Nationals, but like, oh, she's running for something Overwatch related. And this is a very first step for her. It's very ambitious. It's very, you know, it's a leap forward. And uh, she's trying, just trying to say that if you guys are going to support me with that leap, I would really appreciate, but understand if you just want me to take a step first. So hopefully Momo Ring is ready to go with... Um, yeah? Oh, no, no, he, uh... he, he, he typed his thing. Okay. I'm yeah, ready. yeah, here. I'm ready to talk about him. So, Momoring says, I think the biggest reason to vote for him is he knows how esports works. He's been in it. He's been a professional about it, and he also knows the business side and thought, uh, business side, all the talks in terms of how they work, that kind of deal. Really knows how to communicate within the esports scene. Unfortunately, <laughs> he does give us the one amusing say, uh, statement to say why we shouldn't: his internet connection. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. to the V.I.P. So yeah, Momo showing that esports is the way to go. I've been an esports guy since forever and it really goes to show that I can prove my worth. Unfortunately, you can't go with the E without the internet. So that's something you gotta figure that one out. Fascinating. What do you think about those answers? Uh, I, want you, I want to hear what your thoughts, the digestion from it. Uh, really... It's this is this has been a, in my opinion, um, this is the one I've been um, actually been waiting to, because uh, I'm not familiar with um, 
the people running for the position of general manager. Um, uh, this is very educate. This podcast has been educational for me, um, especially since uh, this this gives us a an educate a better uh, educational uh, decision on who to vote for. So having this podcast, yeah, like what you said, um, is really is really good to have, and um, I like how. Um, their background is really diverse. For example, you have Power of Love's um, uh, knowledge on the uh, technical side and having a really, um, really unique way of producing um, different sponsors through through his um, experience, his background, um, as well with, as well as uh, Nila. Wait, how do you how do you say your full IGN Nila Varial? Is that right? That is correct. You got yeah. it on the first try. Good okay. job. What a player. Nice. Big claps what a there player. to fascinate. Big clap. Foggers on the chat. Never mind. Joke. Just no, kidding. No, <laughs> not that kind of chat yet, but you know, you can give him foggers. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, um, so Nilla, uh, on her side, she's more, at least on the esports side. And I like how she said about, uh, she talked about um, grabbing uh, or having connections with HP Omen. And um, SM Cyber Mall, uh, sorry, Cyber Zone, sorry. It's because uh, I'd like to uh, point out that um, I think Cyber, SM Cyber Zone being a client or at least uh, having a connection with SM is like beneficial because uh, there's a lot of uh, esports event that is, that is uh, happening in SM malls, right? Um, so it, it's, it, it, while it seems like um, it's not, it's a, a bit, Far from esports side, it's actually kind of connected to 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 our um um to our uh, what do you call this to to her uh, probably um uh, her what do you call this, you can do this her platform I guess yeah yeah, yeah 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 basically um and what else and Momo Ring's um really unique um approach in using um K-pop or music industry. To, to be able to uh, pull some sponsors off of it, so in a way we have like this diverse option, and um, pe- people can really decide on which they think is better for the Philippine community, Philippine Overwatch yeah. team. Korean brands rather, but yeah, it's just very yeah Korean like, brands. Sorry, international centric, and it's yeah, 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 international. It's, it's communities you wouldn't really expect. From Overwatch it was really cool. I like the approach, and I love uh, the juicy analysis we got from Mr. Fastnate. So that concludes our questions from the side of the host. Again, we'll be taking two to three questions from the community. So if you got a question for GMs, hit it up on to Mr. Rebirth or Mr. Dodge. This we got two already, and these ones are interesting ones. I got to read it out loud first before I can digest it and pretty much summarize for you all. So the first question is from Calderon again. Uh, it goes like this. If you guys receive enough funding but insufficient to cover all ten players, I, all seven players plus the community, which is ten people, how do you guys plan to proportion or distribute the funding? So basically, what is the plan if we have this leftover money that we can't use? What is how are our, the negotiations going to pan out to the sponsors? Do we able to keep it? Will we pretty much have a salary for the players, for the people? Do we have to give it back? That kind of a deal. So I think we can uh, summarize it on a simpler note. Why? What do we do if we don't fly but have money left over? Yeah, I think it's a very basic way to say it, but at the same time, it's a lot more relatable that way. Let's start things off again with Power of Love. What do you gotta say about that one? Okay, so um, I, I'm not sure if I got this correctly. Um, if we if we got the money. And we were not able to try to um, for the World Cup, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll reiterate. So my question is: If you guys how have enough money to fund some people, but not everyone? Ah. Okay. Okay. Let me rephrase that because that question is actually a little hard to understand. So, Brendan, you have enough 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 money to fly some people over. What? would be the priority 
basically. So, for the out of 10 people, you can fly 8 over. Who would you fly over in terms of priority? Uh, I okay. think I'll try to phrase that for everyone to understand a little better. As uh, Power of Love does give us his answer. Okay, so... Can I, can I know? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So basically, I think my priority would be uh, the seven players, obviously, and the coach. Because honestly, um, me as a GM, I'm not really, uh, um, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to be the first person to go there. Because I want the players to go there. Because they're the most important people. Because, <laughs> you know, without players, you won't be able to play. And as, as well as the coach. Because the coach will help them um go like um how do you say this enable them na hindi lang basta hindi lang basta in their games but also psychologically um uh, mentally so get so parang yeah um priority would be the players and the uh, coach so if you're asking why not the community lead um we could <laughs> but for me it's it's still a better priority for the coach to be there because technically those people are his babies quote unquote okay there's a little follow-up to that in the chat it's actually a very complex question if you think about it that should have been worded a lot better at the start so so pretend you have this priority you have right of uh, mm -hmm. seven people uh, you have for the players and the coach what if there are some members who can pay out of pocket would you be willing to impose that so all 10 can fly over or would you stick to having pretend you can only send eight people you only send you said the seven players and the one coach how would you plan that one out it's actually a very difficult question to think about yeah for me i think uh well in my opinion i would not um get all of the like like you mean like one person can pay by himself right yeah 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 i i would not advise that. However, I would rather ask everyone if they're comfortable with splitting the remaining, um, yeah, re remaining deficit. Like, if if we need like thirty k more or something, like fifty k more, are you willing to split it among each other, among among us, so that we would be able to go there? So yeah, yeah. Uh, I like this. This is some very real world, you know, impositions real world stigma so like would you be willing to impose a little bit you know flex your power if you can if someone can really just pay someone's like and is that it actually leads to many other questions would you put a player who who isn't really the best skilled but at the same time can pay out of pocket for that work just to make the thing happen that's a very good sacrifice that just leads to all the positions having to rethink their priorities, rethink their lists, and this is only just for GMs, is for coaching, is for community leads, and this is honestly for all the players. If they think their skill is enough for them, not only to get to World Cup because they're better than the rest, but at the same time, so much better than the rest that they really deserve the sponsorship. Okay, so next on the list, Momo Ring still have struggling. He says, say same thing, players and the coach, but. He's really looking for a fund to find a way to get everyone to fly over. He has experience with business, owning an online store, and knowing how to really raise and handle money. So it's pretty much a all or nothing approach, maybe. Like if worse comes to worse, it's a seven plus one. But he's his real goal is to go for the ten or the ten ten zero that kind of deal. So yeah, Momo Ring showing that he does have the maturity on that business. And it's very, it's a very imposing question. Nila, what do you got to say about this one? Okay, I agree that this is a very uh, tricky question because, of course, it, you know, brings up maybe all kinds of class issues um, uh, in terms of, like, you know, um, financial capacity. Uh, I would say, just like, uh, just like the other two, I definitely would prioritize the players and the coach. But if it just so happens that it comes down to, like, maybe even the team that, like, only three can afford to go um split up the funds that we have and then maybe 
they shoulder the rest. If it just so happens that that is um, the the financial capacity issue comes up and it's absolutely inevitable, I would probably talk to the players like one by one because this problem shouldn't have to be imposed on the players. Um, but maybe if it's like if if we're totally desperate and because like maybe this is our first round, if we have difficulty getting sponsorships, I would talk to them and maybe see if they are okay with it. If not, if, if they're not okay with it, I kind of want to go with the fact because like um, kind of like um, what's this group dynamics? If one goes, uh, or sorry, if one can't go, then they all can't go because I think that like totally makes it unfair, um, especially if it's the team, especially if it's like um, the whole team. So I kind of want to um, make sure that all of them will get to go. Yeah. yeah. So- yeah, same. Lots of sentiments there. Uh, I do love that everyone's like, okay, this is the priority. Without the team, there is no World Cup. That yeah. kind of deal. It's about it is. But what do you think about it? So, as a potential player, because of course you're not running for anything because you want to try out for a player. What do you think about hearing this from our general managers? Definitely, I there's no. I th- in my opinion, there's no point in um, I'm sending out five just five players because. The Blizzard definitely won't accept that, you know. I mean, uh, like, there's also no point in like, what, what, what's gonna? It, it'll look like a, it'll just look like, um, a clown fiesta in, uh, in the, uh, in the streams, like whatever. And then, definitely, it'll be a bad image for us. That's yeah. that that's uh that's a thing we should uh, uh or is going to be uh, an issue as well. Um, um, what else? Um, or yeah, technically, I do agree with all of them with prioritizing the at least seven, if not six, and then the coach, if possible. But um, if if we do uh, ever get like uh, uh, funding for uh, more people to 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 fly for the trip, uh, that would be that would be better. But uh, the important thing is. Um, that uh, they have a plan, uh, or at least have a, have something for at least the players and the coach to be yeah. able to fly. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. there, yeah. I feel like that's the same way to go. The players yeah. are the priority, and yeah, the yeah, next yeah. one should be the coach because all the coach really does handle so much behind, you know, behind BlizzCon wall. Like it's Definitely. very very important, and especially just to acclimate them. And then either of the two. And yeah, it's something to really talk about, think about. I think this is something we can't just talk about right now. It's something we have to consider alongside the process, not only for voting, but during community handling and committee formation, as well as the player roster. Very, very loaded question. And I'm glad that it was brought up. So one more from the community. I think it's a little simpler. It's more about really just the fate people have in the whole financial situation or lack of faith thereof our question is what experience do you have with fundraising and budgets this is a very real world question it really involves like how and like how successful they have been in raising funds or working with budgets the financial situation what kind of values what kind of advertising they can do for uh the team uh for sponsors to be enticed to really work with and sponsor the team i i feel like We've answered this just a little bit, but it really goes to show the fate of the community really hangs on this question. Because I, for one, am very jaded. Again, my cat being a bit, uh, this is the third time, but I guess that's the charm right there. But as I was saying, this is a very important question because this is the first thing that has hampered me with the whole World Cup thing. I was like, I, I immediately wrote the World Cup off because of the whole financial situation thing, the whole having to sponsor thing. And uh, now I, I do have faith because seeing people really rise up, but I still have that pang in my heart. I still have that, eh, is it really going to happen? I, I feel like I'm going to st- I'm gonna do my best to make them ready. But until I really see that I can trust our candidates, that they can do it, I feel like I won't have that much faith in the whole process and again this is what the summit is for hopefully this can alleviate our worries start things off again with power of love take it away my friend 
Okay, so experience in fundraising and budgets. Basically, um, majority of my experience with fundraising and budgets go back in university. So I've been involved with a lot of organizations. Uh, I didn't mention it here, but I'll mention it now. I was uh, part of a, um, if you're familiar with the Junior Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers uh, in Lungsod, Manila, it's the it's like a student chapter of the official uh, Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers. Well, basically, I handled um, seminars and conferences there. So I was a project head, meaning that I handled all the overseeing in that project. So I have experience with um, using uh, canvassing the budget, uh, making sure that we have enough sponsors, fundraising for the tickets and the other merchandises. So, yeah. Um, to be more specific in fundraising, um, it's more on me um, having a seminar to boost uh, the the money pool in our in our organization. As for the budgets, yeah, um, it's mostly coming out to the canvassing. Uh, what stuff do we need? What is it, like for the sponsors? Like what target markets do they want that we sh that we share? And yeah. It's, it's going to be all technical and, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain for me. Sorry. But, yeah, those are my experience. Yeah. Right. We're looking for success this year, guys. And uh, I, I don't really have much to analyze about it. All we're looking for examples. And that's what I want to hear from each of these uh, candidates is I can put my trust in them. And it's good to hear that it has happened before for Power of Love. Next on the list, Momo Ring. Uh, what does he got to say? Uh... I have experience on raising funds, been doing it since first selling. So really all about those Korean brands as well as the K-pop fan clubs can easily do so too. Uh, you know, we can use that experience to do so for Overwatch and just get the community to help out as well. Community fundraising, always a way to go if we can get enough, uh, enough support from the community. We don't need a big brand over there. And as always, there's always a plan B. It's always a plan B somewhere. Very, very simple. It's very all a very grounded. Can't go wrong with a community fundraiser. It's going to be a tough task though, Mr. Fascinate. Wouldn't you agree to work the community? <laughs> definitely is. Yes, yeah. Definitely is. It probably has to be one of those. It's a, it's yeah. a, what do you call this? It's a brand, but not a brand. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, we're sponsoring you, but it's not a brand. It's just that person. Maybe something like biscuits or something would help us out. <laughs> but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, and mm. last but not thinking least, emoji. Uh, thinking that emoji. Last but not least, let's move it over to Nilla. I think this is our last questions for the GMs because we have gone a lot over time, and we have had so many, so many amazing answers from our candidates from CL and GM. Nilla, take it away. All right. Um. So I mentioned that I did produce two films. So one was um with GMA. And one was in Cinemalaya. Guess who had to fundraise for both? <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah. yeah un unfortunately. I, I mean, I say this unfortunately because, well, okay. Uh, that's a whole other issue. But yeah, I did. I was the one who um, helped a lot in fundraising for both films. So this included approaching brands for sponsorships and meeting for those, drafting the proposals, drafting the, the decks if needed, um, fundraising events, setting up fundraising events, and maybe approaching private entities and or individuals. So um, yeah, I guess it will be about looking for the right brands or, or individuals, looking for those that um, align with our vision, in this case, the team's vision. Yeah, um, I, will, I will say that it is a very, very, uh, Kailangan ng maraming patience when it comes to fundraising, but um, at the same time, it is um, it's great when it's a success. And um, in my case, it was a success because those two films um, did make it out into I mean into full production. Um, I hope actually it will be easier with regards to an esports team because like as I've seen with my work here at the Nationals. You, there, it's so encouraging to see all of the support, all of the brands, all of the possibilities that are coming in for the esports team. So it's actually exciting me and fueling me. Yeah, and uh, that is something that Nila should know about a lot, uh, especially being part of the Nationals. The Nationals, all these teams sponsored by big brands in the PH, telecommunications, and the like. Very, very mainstream. And with the fact that she has worked through filmography, funding her own films, that's very, 
that's very very difficult to do and really goes to show that all these three general manager candidates have this experience in the real world they do have the knowledge to be able to sell not only just the team but also make some uh, little good dough from the community and I feel like it's a lot better to hear that from them instead of trying to assume instead of trying to just vote with uh, with disregard for anyone that kind of deal just pick whoever sounds most enticing hearing them that they have had these successes really does put a little more faith in this uh, journey so fascinating I think we are done with all the questions for the GMs how I do you feel so well. how do you feel after hearing that from all of them um, I'm definitely uh, enlightened uh, as enlightened. to who our uh, candidates are that i think that's the most important thing is uh knowing what their uh what they're capable of what their connections are what their background is um yeah as i as i've said a while ago um this platform is definitely um educational even for me um it's a great it's a great thing that you hosted this because um uh, i think people should know more about our candidates, um, especially if uh, people from different, um, different. I think they're from different backgrounds. Yeah, very, very, very. Um, Murmuring from Ragnarok, Nila from the National um, Power of Love is actually here. still from, playing Overwatch still. From here, yeah. but yeah, yeah. But uh, so yeah, I think uh, it all. As I've said before, and I say it again, it'll. Uh, come down. Uh, it'll boil down to a personal preference. Uh, who do you, who you think would um, be the best candidate for uh, general? Not only for general manager, but as for the uh, other two positions as well. Yeah, and that should wrap that one up for the general manager so of course we'll have our standard open forum all three candidates can talk at will that kind of deal any kind of topic just to cool off and for you guys in the twitch chat we do have a new command made by the two mods it is exclamation point votes uh it's all about who you guys are gonna vote for but i feel like it's that's not really that what we're looking oh, for and it's like it's like I'd say who really impressed you in the summit. That's yeah, what yeah, I want to hear. Yeah, That's what actually. I want to hear. Can you change that one real quick, Rebirth? It's like who who impressed you the most in this summit? Because uh, we'll find out who gets all the votes on uh, you know June 10th, June 11th, whatever. But for now, who really showed you that they have a good platform for either of the positions? You can make one for GM, one for community lead. Don't make one for coach. There's no point. Uh, yeah, and... I'm just glad to have everyone here, even with all technical difficulties. Big shout out to the community leads from a while ago. Thank you, thank you to the GMs who found a way to make it happen, even through tech issues and scheduling issues as well. So yeah, floor is all yours, guys. Anything you guys gonna say before we go? That kind of deal. Well, no closer, closer. Right, okay. what's up? So first of all, guys, thank you so much, Dax and Fascinate, for uh, organizing this. It was thank really, you, Rim. really thank you as well. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really nice, actually. So, I don't know. Hopefully, we can get the results faster. Excited na ho, actually. Yeah. June, voting is still June 10. I'll figure out yeah. when that is yeah. going to be. Momoring, going into the chat. Thanks, Dax and Fascinate. Oh, Fascinate, getting the credit. I was just like, hey, Yuki, you want to do this? And he's like, sure. Okay, <laughs> that's that's pretty much the show. I'm always G, bro. That was, you're, that was... you're, you're my favorite person in Overwatch. Oh, you're Overwatch. my... Yeah. You're my favorite person. Period. Smile. Yes, Don't tell you me that. Don't tell you me that. But yeah, there you go. Mm. Uh, Sideline lah. Like, like um, yeah, I've been, diba, I've been involved in sponsorship. So you know, sanay na rin ako reject and stuff. So tagap na nating lahat. Okay, my heart. It's okay. Rejection just but makes yeah. the heart stronger, and for every closed door, there are ten that open or something like that. No, no. Uh, na nasaktan and need the words. Please press I, I, F. I, I, dude, I haven't found any open doors. I've been stuck in Overwatch forever. Help me. But yeah, no yeah. problem. Don't worry about Ooh. that. That's kind of deal. No one's no one heard that. That Ghana. Throwing shade. Yeah, Nilla, you got anything to say? Same lot as Magad. Uh, Mooring's like oh, tournaments and gatherings. Yeah, that happens. How about you, Nilla? You got anything? Um, I'm I'm just really overwhelmed because it's a lot to digest. Um, honestly, when I first like 
you know, click that link, I was like, oh, hey, this one suits my... Um... And then it became actually like a real possibility. I'm like, whoa, I, wait, okay, I can't say that. I have to watch my language, but yeah. That's okay, was, it's okay. Was, Just not, okay. Not, not the TOS. You can say bad words. Okay. There's no TOS, Arino, at least Arino. Yeah, well, um, so yeah, I'm just really overwhelmed. And I'm so glad that there are, you know, such amazing, capable people that um, that I'm running with. I mean, it seems like any which way this goes, you know, the, the team is going to be in great, great hands. And I like that. Well. I, like, I like the confidence in uh, that. So that does conclude our summits. Uh, I've been, I was able to answer some of the coach questions a while ago and I pretty much all those submitted so it is what it is. You know where to find me if you have any other questions for that aspect. Again, this whole thing is about the GMs, all about the community leads, all about you voicing your opinions, that kind of deal. So now, just quick little reminder. Type an exclamation vote on the chat. We do have a poll to see who mo impressed you the most in the summit, not who you're gonna vote for, because we're gonna find that out it's like June 10 plus. This one is who really impressed you. So pretend you voted or voting for someone because they're a friend or whatever, but if someone else really impressed you, feel free to give them your vote because we wanna see how impactful this summit has been. And maybe just maybe we can do a few more of these with the PH World Cup and the whole team. So I think that's about it. It's 9.33. We are one and a half hours late for Pugs. But it's time to say lobby up. And it's time to move on into Overwatch itself. Thank you to Pyro Love Boomerang and Nila Varial for the opportunity and the time right now. Thank you a while to you, me, 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 as well as Shock Rizal. And it's Adam Dax. He's been fascinated. You'll probably see him on the field. You'll probably hear me cast in just a bit. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you guys.